In this tutorial, we'll cover some of the basics of Mod Desk XML. You'll find the sample mod in the Giants Engine SDK panel on your DVD. Alternatively, you can download the zip file via the download link below the video player. Once the file has downloaded, we can copy the archive sample mod zip to our mod directory, found under Username, My Documents, My Games, Farming Simulator 2015, Mods. We then extract the zip file and delete the original sample mod zip archive. Then we go to the folder we just created and open the file moddesk.xml. Of course, one of the first pieces of information we should include in a mod is the author. We also recommend increasing the version number if we are creating a number of different versions of a mod and putting them up for download. Here we have the title of the mod, in other words, its name. It should be noted that there are several entries, one for each language. For example, DE for German, EN for English, and FR for French. We should try to support as many languages as possible with our mod, at the very least our own and English. Therefore, we should aim to create the appropriate entries for these languages where possible. Here we have the description, also in several different languages. Next, we have the entry for the thumbnail picture of the mod, as shown in the in-game buy menu. As with the textures for the Giants engine, this image should be saved in DDS format. Although in this case without MIP maps and with a size of 256 by 128 pixels. Then we have an entry that indicates whether the mod is already functional in multiplayer. If your mod doesn't contain any custom scripts, then you can safely set this to true. But for mods that do use any new or self-written scripts, they may not be multiplayer compatible. In this case, we may need to fill in false instead. Next, we come to the entries that need to be completed so that we can buy the mod through the vehicle dealer in the game. You can store multiple machines in one folder or zip file. It should therefore be mentioned that you can create multiple store item blocks within the store items block. First, we need the name of the machine in the current store item block. Then the rotation entry follows. If this entry isn't set to zero, the mod will be rotated around its y-axis by the specified value it purchased. Now comes a further entry for the picture, in this case, two. The first is for the machine itself, and the other for the brand logo of the manufacturer of the machine. As with the previous image, icon, file name, these images should be saved in DDS format with no MIP maps. Next come two values for the economic data of the machine. These are the purchase price of the machine and the maintenance costs which are paid daily. You then need to specify the path for the vehicle XML file of the mods. This XML file stores all the information that configures the functions of the vehicle. Here we have another entry that refers to the name of the vehicle manufacturer. The reason why you cannot just write vehicle manufacturer X is that the spelling of the brand name may differ across several different languages. But by using this method, we can ensure spelling remains consistent across all mods and languages. To find out how the L10N name of the manufacturer for the mod should be set, we open the SDK folder in the installation directory of Farming Simulator and find the manufacturer's TXT file. Finally, let's look at the last two entries in a store item block. The first is the category of the machine. This could be, as shown here, a tractor, a combine harvester, a trailer, an attachment or a loading wagon. Of course, there are a lot more types of vehicles too. A list of all the available types can be found in the SDK folder of the installation directory of Farming Simulator. The categories TXT file lists all the possible vehicle types. And finally, we have the specs section. This lets us set the properties of a vehicle as to be displayed in the shop. For a tractor, we only have to include the performance information, while other types of vehicles will have several possible properties that can be displayed. As before, a list of all the possible properties can be found in the SDK folder under Specs and Functions TXT.